The Thames River has flowed through southwestern Ontario since the Ice Age, and much history has happened here near the city of London. Almost unnoticed in the passing of centuries were the curious ramblings of a biology student from Trinity College, Toronto. In 1867, the year of Canada's Confederation, young William Osler was here gathering polyzoa for a paper in biology. Like Banting, he was turning away from his father's vocation as minister and heading toward medicine. The surest route at the time was medical school at McGill. Beyond Montreal was a tour through medical centers in Europe. His return to McGill was a welcome event, as Osler possessed one asset which drew people to him without resistance. Osler had personality. In a time when great men were decidedly dull, his very presence inspired trust and confidence. Osler knew what should be, and everyone he met was swept along. Ten years into the McGill experience, his reputation was so widespread that he was actively recruited by the University of Pennsylvania to become chairman of clinical medicine and given carte blanche to lead the program to new horizons. In today's terms, Osler would have been described as a people person. Just having him walk into the ward would start a small commotion because he sincerely believed that the best place to learn medicine was at the bedside of the afflicted and not in a textbook. At the time, it was a radical idea, but it caught on, and soon Osler was courted by Johns Hopkins University at Baltimore. After 16 years transforming medicine at Johns Hopkins, Osler went to Oxford as Regis Professor of Medicine and counted Wilder Penfield among his many students. Osler died in 1919, but his ideas and methods live on in today's modern physician.